In this video, we're going to look at something called hypothesis testing, and we're going to look at how statistical techniques can be used in order to determine whether a hypothesis is valid or not. Now, for the purpose of this demonstration, we have a scenario, and in the top left hand corner, we see the results of a trial that was carried out before an intervention. And in this trial, a dimension on a component has been measured, and the deviation from the nominal value has been noted. So let's say, for example, the nominal value was meant to be 12 millimetres. In the far top left hand corner, we have 0.06. So that would correspond with a measurement of 12.06 millimetres or 11.94 millimetres. All we're recording here is the deviation from the nominal value. So before the intervention, we can see there that we have sampled 20 components. And for simplicity, we're going to assume that this was 20 consecutive components. So 20 consecutive components were sampled and that dimension was measured on each. Now an intervention has taken place and this might be a modification to the setup of the machine. It might be changing of cutting tools. There's any number of interventions that could have taken place. But what we have is a hypothesis in the bottom left hand corner, which states that the modifications improve component accuracy. So whatever changes have been made, we need to run a second trial in order to determine whether improvements have come about as a result of those changes. Now, this is what's known as a two-tailed hypothesis test because the changes or the modifications that we've made may actually have a negative impact on component accuracy. Although our hypothesis is that it improves component accuracy, the opposite is also possible. So at the top in the middle, we have the results from trial two. Again, the dimension has been measured for 20 sample components and the deviation from the nominal values have been noted once again. Now, in order for this to be what we call a paired test, all of this data must have been collected from the same machine. So the modification or the changes have to have been made to the machine on which the original data was recorded and then the new data would be collected on the same machine. Also, for this to be a paired test, it's important to specify once again that what we're measuring is 20 consecutive components. And this is so that we can accurately replicate the first test. All of the parameters need to be the same in order for it to be a paired test. So in order to conduct a hypothesis test, we need to do a number of things. First of all, we need to work out the differences between each of those deviations before and after the intervention. And I've already completed the table here on the left hand side. I'll just show you how I generated these results. So in the top left hand corner of our differences table, we've taken the deviation after the intervention and we've subtracted the deviation before the intervention. If we move on to our second difference then, we've taken the deviation after the intervention and we've subtracted the deviation before the intervention, taking care to reference the corresponding cell each time. And that's been done for all of the values in the two tables. So now we have a table of the differences before and after the trial. So over in the top right hand corner, we have two formulas. One of them is for calculating something called the critical value or the critical T value. And the critical value changes depending on the confidence level we want to apply. We'll look at this in a bit more detail in a moment. But if we wanted to say that the modifications to the machine have led to an improvement with a confidence level of 90%, then we would have a critical value corresponding with that. And if we wanted to say that the changes to the machine had a positive impact with a confidence level of 95%, then we would have a higher critical value of T. So what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the t-value for our paired trial and then we're going to compare that t-value with these two critical values of t. So first of all we need to calculate our t-value and this formula here states that the t-value for this particular study is the mean of the differences d bar times the square root of the number of pieces of data all divided by the standard deviation of the differences. So we need to calculate a couple of things. First of all, we need the mean of our differences. So in the yellow table just below, the mean of our differences, I'm going to use the formula that we've seen before, equals average. I'm going to open brackets, 
I'm going to highlight all of the cells with our differences in here. Close brackets and hit enter. So there we have the mean of the differences, minus 0.0115. Next, I have the variance of the differences, and I need this in order to determine the standard deviation of my differences. So I'm going to type equals var. This is sample data, so I'm using var.s, as we've seen in an earlier tutorial. And then I'm going to highlight all of those differences again, because I want the variance of those differences. Now I can calculate the standard deviation of those differences because the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So I'm going to use the function sqrt for square root. And I'm going to click on the variance cell. So that's the variance that we've just calculated. Close brackets equals. And now I have my standard deviation for those differences. So the final step then is to bring all of that together and calculate the t-value for this paired intervention. Recall that it's paired because this data has been collected on the same machine. So I have equals. The first term on the top of that fraction is the mean of the differences. So I'm going to click on the cell with that value. The second term is root n. Well, I have 20 pieces of data, so I need to do times the square root of 20. And I'll use the function. And then I need to close brackets because that's everything on the top of my fraction. Next, I need to divide by the standard deviation of the differences. And I have this in the cell K11. Okay, K11. Ordinarily, I would click on the cell, but as we're typing the formula in the cell below, I can't currently click on cell K11. But having inputted the formula, I can hit enter. And I can see that I have a value of minus 1.905. Now that minus just tells us that those differences are reducing rather than increasing. What we're really interested in is the magnitude, 1.905. So that would indicate that there is a reduction in those deviations from the nominal value. But what I need to see is what level of confidence I have that that's the case. So here, if I want to find the critical value for 90% confidence, I can use the formula at the top here. It states that TCV equals TINV, open brackets, A, comma, N minus 1. Now on the equations and information sheet for this topic, I show you how to transfer between a percentage confidence to this A value, and for 90% confidence, A is 0 0.1. So in this cell here, I'm going to type equals, I'm going to use the TINV function, which is an Excel function for calculating critical values. And inside the brackets, I need 0 0.1 for a 90% confidence, and n minus 1, well, we have 20 bits of data, so n minus 1 is 19. Now, what we can see is the magnitude of our t value here, 1.905, is greater than the critical value. Now, what that indicates is that our hypothesis, which stated the modifications improve component accuracy, is true or valid with a confidence of 90% or more. So let's do the same for 95% to see if we can have a 95% confidence in this. So I do equals TINV open brackets. This time for 95% confidence, we have 0 0.05 as our value of A, comma, N minus one is still 90. And for 95% confidence, that T value needs to be 2.09. Well, what we can see is our magnitude of 1.905 isn't as high as 2.09. Therefore, we can't state that we have 95% confidence in the hypothesis. So in summary, we can see here that the modifications have made an improvement, and we can state that with a confidence of 90%, but we're unable to state that with a confidence as high as 95%.